good afternoon, everyone. My name's Keith Reed. Um, I'm the Chief Exec of the Parent Infant Foundation. And thank you so much for joining this first 1001 Days lunchtime webinar, which we hold every single month. I'm standing in for Sally Hogg, who sends her apologies. She's due to be having a conversation with the Duchess of Cambridge anytime now, chatting through uh, early year support for families. So really on topic. And before we start, um, and I'll introduce you to our guest very shortly. Um, for those of you that don't know about the first 1001 Days movement, it's a group of over 200 organisations and professionals working together to campaign about the importance of babies' emotional wellbeing and development. And if you're interested in finding out more about the 1001 Days movement, go across the Parent Infant Foundation website where there's lots more detail. So, to introduce you to today's guest, who's Joe Gordon, who's the founder, CEO of Daniel's Den, who will be running through a pre presentation about what to do, why, very shortly. Um, the reason she's been invited along is because baby and toddler groups tend to be seen as quite, quite below the radar, not necessarily given the enormous value and importance that they play within our society. And there's often a disconnect about understanding that importance and then public sector professionals referring to them and understanding the role that they can play and how they can tap into families in a really gentle, low key, supportive way. And I think what spurred Sal and others, Joe, was understanding during COVID how many of these groups closed and because many are run by volunteers there's a question if they're ever going to come back to the level and numbers that we saw pre-pandemic and i understand joe that you're really a shining light in this area and that your parents helped co-create the mission and purpose behind the first 1001 days movement as well so you're very very wedded into this now I'm going to hand across to you any second, Joe, but just the flag to all of our attendees, of which there are plenty, that there'll be a chance um, to ask questions throughout using the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. So if you just write any of your questions in there and then I'll share those with Joe at the end and she'll come back and answer. So Joe, across to you, if that's okay. Oh, thank you so much, Keith, for that kind introduction. You may have noticed that I disappeared um, as you were introducing me, but it was just to get my little friend, Funny Bunny, who's my co-presenter today. He's going to be sitting and watching, but you will see him on some of our slides. But yes, he's a, a representative of Daniel's Den, the parent talent group that I'm going to talk about today. And for those who joined earlier, you may have overheard Keith and I's conversation that he once went to a toddler group and remembers it fondly. And um, I was telling him that there, there, there were pre-pandemic over 20,000, estimated 20,000 toddler groups. How many there are now, we don't know, but I'm here and I'm gonna share my screen with you. I have prepared a presentation, but as Keith said, I'm very happy to answer any questions um or comments that you have so i'm just going to share this up so here we are so this is daniel's Den. my name is joe gordon and i am the founder and ceo of daniel's den a parent and toddler group based in brent in northwest london and as keith said with sally that i have been running toddler groups for over 25 years. And I truly, truly believe that toddler groups are the hidden treasure of our nation. Often um, unnoticed, but yet bringing so much value to the families that attend. And I'm just putting this out there right at the start that Daniel's Den has a real positive presence on social media with Facebook, um, Twitter and Instagram and that is how I found out about the 1001 Days movement with Sally Hogg 
And I watch and I follow the tremendous work that other organisations and statutory bodies do for um, this wonderful age of naught to two, those first 1001 days. And I'm also part of a national network, which is an informal network called 1277 Counts, of which we have thousands of members and we have a fantastic Facebook group. So if you run a toddler group or you want to know more about them, um, I would check out that Facebook group too. I truly believe there should be a toddler group within walking distance of every family of the nation. And my first thing to say to you is, do you know the ones in your area? Where are they and how do you engage with them? I'm going to share the story of Daniel's Den, which is one of these many toddler groups. And my first slide is why and when Daniel's Den was started. There is a picture of me with my children who are now aged 25 and 24. I grew up in North Yorkshire, a very close-knit community, and I found myself giving birth to my child in London. And I just felt, my gosh, what am I doing bringing up my child in this big city? And I wanted my child to know and be known in the local community. And I wanted him and myself to build relationships that matter within and beyond our cultural and ethnic group. I'm sharing this picture of those sheep because this is the, my background, but this recognition that every family has its story. And being a primary school teacher, that's my background. And I saw the value in encouraging and enriching family life in order to build strong communities. And this lived experience, when I had my child, I was, had all these friends that I was working with and then suddenly I find myself at home, all my friends are at work, my husband's working, the loneliness and the isolation that I felt caused me to set up a local parent and toddler group. And I would never, this was 25 years ago when my son was four months old, but now you, as I'm going to show in my presentation, you will see how the, the start of Daniel's Den, how it has grown and developed. And our objective is really simple, to have family life valued in all levels of society, both lo locally and nationally. And we do this by delivering first rate toddler groups, offering parenting support and raising the importance of investing in a child's first five years of life. This is why I love 1001 First Days. Where do we meet? This is where we meet. We run um, over 10 groups um, during any one week term time only. And these are the different venues. We meet in churches, we meet in community centres, we've met in schools, and we even meet online with our global Zoom. Check out our website if you want to know more. But what do we do in a toddler group? I don't know whether those of you who are watching or listening have ever been to a toddler group, but they all come in different shapes and sizes. But at Daniel's Den, this is what we do. Um, the lifeblood of, our, of what Daniel's Den does is our toddler groups. We offer a safe, welcoming space for families of all shapes and sizes, parents, carers, babies, pregnant ladies who haven't given birth yet come to our session. And we have a simple structure offering the opportunity to do crafts, to play with toys, to have snacks, to sing songs. Keith was saying before, he remembers those songs fondly to hear stories, to experience community building, information sharing. We use our toddler groups in a great way to share what's going on in the local community. And one of the fundamental reasons why we run our groups is to offer parenting support. And we do this implicitly and explicitly. Now, we know that Sally is meeting with the Duchess of Cambridge and in the Royal Foundation report 
one of the things that they said was about the value of having a local community network to support families and to support parents and to encourage them and give them information that will help them in their parenting. We can't assume that people know everything. So we offer this support implicitly through the way that we organize our sessions and just that structure and just being there to just give that timely word of encouragement, our advice. And we also do it through explicitly. We have designed a set of 12 parenting postcards that are very easy to read and have bite-sized advice that our parents love. And when they've passed them on to grandparents, these grandparents said, oh, I wish I'd heard of this 45 years ago. Amazing. But of course, we do so much more than these sessions. At Daniel's Den, we run nature projects. During the lockdown, we developed a fantastic sowing seeds project and developed an allotment. We run trips going to local farms. We've recently just been to Hanwell Zoo. That was fantastic. Dad Zone is something that we do once a month for dads and uncles and granddads and male carers and their children. It, and you'll find that later, it's the highlight of my month. Um, again, signposting to services. People come, they want to know, where else can I go with my children? How do I find out if, my, if I've got concerns about speech and language? Um, local partnerships, we are always working to look with local charities, um, businesses, the Canal River Trust. We organised a duck hunt to our local reservoir. That was fantastic. Online toddler groups during lockdown from the very first day, Daniel's Den, we closed our physical doors to our toddler groups, but we went online and every day through lockdown, we were up, up providing some online presence. And one of these global Zooms continues today where we can meet with families and share with them. We've, we've made videos of how to make crafts, during lockdown, we did a fantastic project for expecting the newborn mothers called Bumps, Bra Babies and Brushes. And in that picture there, you see a mum who was pregnant with twins, a local artist. And she wanted to create a space for, for expectant mothers and people with newborns to come and to um, just chat and just feel supported through craft, which was fantastic. As I've mentioned to before and alluded to before, we really believe in having supportive networks and supporting top group leaders. So we lead networks in our local authority in Brent, but also across London. And as I mentioned, 1277, which is a national informal network for church based toddler groups. And finally, the consultancy and public speaking. Oftentimes people come and approach us for advice about setting up a group. Or what do you do with a lack of volunteers? So we provide that expertise, being one of the go-to voices within the nation. And as I mentioned before, through our explicit parenting um, support, we, we've got parenting postcards. But of course, we couldn't do what we do without our volunteers. And we run an amazing volunteer programme. Our volunteers often are the parents who have brought their children to Daniel's Den and then their children have gone off to school and the parents have said, oh, I'd like to pay back to give something back. Many of our volunteers um, delight to come and volunteer with us because they can work between nine and three term time only. And it gives them that opportunity to build their confidence, learn new skills and see what it's like to be part of a team. Our volunteers span a wide age range from all different backgrounds, truly representing the community. And it's such a joy when someone comes through the door and they see someone who looks a little bit like them. But which families use the groups and their needs? As I alluded to before, at Daniel's Den, we welcome families of all shapes and sizes regardless of their postcode or their need. So I've, I've listed five sort of groups here, but this list, this is not an exhaustive list. 
at Daniel's Den, people can come from all different backgrounds. So multicultural families. Because we live in Brent, one of the most ethnically diverse authorities in the whole of the UK, of course, we're going to have a very multicultural range of families. In a recent survey in one week, we had 165 families attend, or well, those were the ones that took part in the survey, and they represented 54 nationalities and 32 different languages. And our activities are open to anyone. New friendships are formed, and that thing about making relationships that matter within and beyond your cultural and ethnic group is a really key thing in what we do. And of course, we have many people who come with very limited English, um, but they are often find someone else who speaks in their language. Google Translate is a wonderful thing, but just the atmosphere and the structure um, creates that sense of welcome and rhythm. And it's amazing how the families testify to how it really helps them settle into the local community. Other families that we support, transitory families. People come and people go. And in a city like London, this is often the case, whether it's for three weeks, three months or three years, we at Daniel's Den provide a haven for families to come. For example, one day we had a phone call from a mum who had just been put into a room with her two-year-old in a house that was shared with seven other households and they shared two bathrooms and one kitchen. This mum had very limited access to any of the basic equipment, but because she'd connected with Daniel's Den, the toddler group down her street, we ensured within 24 hours that we were providing the equipment and somewhere to store her clothes and food and a towel to, to, what, to dry her baby with. This was all provided from Daniel's Den. Within three weeks, she was moved again. We don't know where she went, but for those three weeks, we made a difference. And the bridge building between new and old communities in Wembley, where I live, there's lots of new houses. As I say, you can build flats and houses, but it doesn't build community. Having an established toddler group that has a welcome to everybody, whether they're from um, a new build or whether or not the generations of family have been in the same home, creating the opportunity to build bridges can be life transforming on both sides. And I think that's the one thing about Daniel's Den and toddler groups. They really provide this opportunity for community development. 85% of the adults who use Daniel's Den are mums. Many are stay-at-home mums, but many are mums who work part-time or juggle their hours so that they can bring their children to Daniel's Den. As we know, postnatal depression is something that one in three mums can experience, and it's not often freely discussed in groups. But we've found in our groups that people feel that there's a safe environment for experiences to be shared and advice given. And I think that non-judgmental, providing that space for non-judgmental support, that cup of tea that someone else makes you can be absolutely life transforming for so many. Other families that we serve, families with varying financial needs. 33% of Brent residents live in poverty and Brent has the lowest ranked average employee income in London. As we know with the cost of living crisis, people often have to choose between basic amenities and often it's children that suffer as a result. Our activities are free. We welcome donations but we aim to make sure that money is never a barrier for people to participate in what we do. Last but certainly not least, I've put on here that we work with dads. We have a, a monthly dad zone. We have lots of dads who come during the week, which is fantastic. But oftentimes, um, historically, groups like ours were often referred to as the mother and toddler group. Well, we don't say that. 
but we do call it a parent and toddler group because mums and dads matter, as do the other carers as well. But we often feel that parenting is often, it's so important to have that in there, to know that we are here to support you as a parent is so key. So we, we work with all families, shapes and sizes. As I said, this is not exhaustive. We work with so many different people. And our next slide just shows that very clearly from naught to 100 years, we believe that everybody has something to give and something to receive. And these are just some of the pictures of some of our volunteers of an 80 year old granny met another granny in the group. And they've formed an amazing friendship and they meet weekly for lunch and go out to the cinema. Another lady um, who has retired said, can I bring my violin and play it? And she just says that she feels the old Jill coming out when she plays the violin. The intergenerational benefit of a baby and toddler group within walking distance of families is huge. And I think it's something that sometimes does get taken for granted. But this whole thing about volunteering and in that bottom left hand picture, you see those children, those they're looking a little bit wary, but those children brought so much joy to those older members of the community. And I think facilitating opportunities for people of all ages to come together and it's just such a magical thing. Here, Daniela, this was a quote in lockdown when we were doing our craft packs, we were sending them out and doing our um, online work, just saying how beneficial she found it, not only for her child and her children, but for herself. And that's something very rudimentary about the work of baby and toddler groups. But what are the challenges and opportunities in running baby and toddler groups at the moment. Well, we've only got a short time in this webinar to talk about these. So I've picked out a few pertinent points, but I'm sure you, as you're listening now, are thinking, what about that toddler group in my area? Well, is there a toddler group in my area? I really wanna challenge you to think about do you know them? Have you made contact with them? How could you encourage them? How can we all work together? Here are some of the, some of the opportunities that Daniel's Den that we face right now. We have picked out four. We could have put out in lots, lots more. But the opportunities, that first one to fulfill the post lockdown realization of the vital need for meaningful relationships and community. I often say, if ever there was a need for a baby in a toddler group, it is now. The pandemic has highlighted the vital need for a safe place to go with your child and meet others. And as Keith quite rightly said, at the very start of that first lockdown, lots of groups closed, well, all groups closed. And um, it was only in special circumstances as, as the sort of pandemic has worked out that groups have been able to reopen, but it has highlighted the value in having somewhere where you can go and meet others and that someone might make you a cup of tea. It can be a life changer for many. The mental health crisis created by the pandemic is huge and um, having that safe space. And I've noticed in the past few weeks, we've had, well, our groups have just been full to overflowing, um, craving to bring their babies and their children to the toddler group. But a couple of weeks ago, a mom came and as she came through the door, I'd never met her before. She says, I want to apologize about my child before I come into the, into the group, she said, because he's going to cry and I'm going to be so embarrassed and it's going to, I just don't know what to do. He's 15 months old and I'm so worried about him. We're getting professional help because his language isn't developing and he won't go to anybody other than me and his dad and the grandparents. And I just said, listen, don't worry, come in. 
we've got a great space. We're used to crying babies. It was her first child and obviously it was very anxious. Lots of parents are and the pandemic has highly highlighted and isolated people from accessing baby and toddler groups or other resources. I said, don't worry if he makes a noise, we'll, it'll be absolutely fine. I, I went into the main hall 10 minutes later and she just looked at me with this beaming smile. I don't believe it. He's gone off and he's playing and this child, like he's only been coming for two weeks, but she said the transformation in him is huge. But for me, the transformation in the confidence of the mum is even bigger. And I think this having a safe place within walking distance, the role of the baby and the toddler group in giving parents confidence um, in those early days and months and years of a child's life, it can be revolutionary. And just another point on that first thing there about the lockdown, that for us as Daniel's Den and for other toddler groups as well, we now have a hybrid offer that we do lots of things through Facebook Live and Zoom sessions. And we're able to bring our baby and toddler group into the homes of people who can't come out because of long-term health conditions or distance. And that's a fantastic opportunity to be able to reach out in an interactive way with families. Another opportunity that we have is to affirm and encourage parents in an informal and non-stigmatizing way. Um, people love to come to a toddler group because it's run by the community for the community. And as such, I think sometimes feels um, less threatening. I know some of our families say that sometimes if they access um, a more formal setting or a children's centre, this has been said to us, or a family wellbeing centre, sometimes they feel like a statistic. Whereas at a locally run baby and toddler group, they feel more accepted for who they are. And that peer to peer support, I know it comes in all different ways, but at a, a local baby and toddler group, it can be really encouraged. And again, that Royal Foundation findings, they found that 70% of parents said they felt judged by others. And I always say to parents at Daniel's Den, when you give birth to your child, you often give birth to guilt and worry. And I think having this space where you can share those and someone will, I understand, that can just make such a lot of difference. Providing accessible and good quality activities to those who may be struggling, especially with the cost of living crisis. Every day, you know, we're impacted, aren't we, by what's going on in the supermarket, at the petrol pumps, our um, utility bills, our gas and electric. The, um, the, the pressures on families today financially are absolutely huge. And lots of statutory provision has been closed. And as Keith said, lots of toddler groups have not reopened or other groups have reopened. And one of the things about Daniel's Den and lots of baby and toddler groups are, is that we offer this opportunity to come to be able to play, to build relationships at an affordable price. As we say, it's free to come to Daniel's Den, but we do ask for that donation. And in some recent research, one of our members of staff, she found out, she was looking at one of our groups to put in a grant application. And she Googled on a well-known um, site that advertises activities for children within a, a five to ten mile radius there were only two activities less than ten pounds for half an hour what a disparity that is who's missing out there what about those babies living down our street and those toddlers who can't afford money for bread on the table how can they afford to pay that amount of money this is why I truly believe there should be a baby and toddler group within walking distance of every family of the nation. And one of the greatest opportunities um, within Daniel's Den at the moment is this cross-pollination with other community groups. On our slide there, there is the picture of the lion and the lamb from our logo and a group of students from a local college. And recently we had an exhibition for our 25th anniversary 
And these students were walking by and they were so intrigued. And they are studying childcare and their course leader said, would there be an opportunity for our students to come and do work experience and work with the families at Daniel's Den? And it's a tick for her and it's a tick for us. And most importantly, it's a tick for our families to be able to invite these students in to come and volunteer and help make our sessions even better than they already are. There are lots of other opportunities. I just love that little child with that sensory play, so much sensory play, recycling, getting out in the fresh air. So many things that we offer families on a week by week basis, but there are challenges. We are part of the voluntary sector. We could not do what we do without our volunteers. And there is always a need for more volunteers. And with the pandemic, lots of people have been reassessing what they're doing and the safety and how vulnerable they feel. And we have had some volunteers who have not returned. And I know it's the reason why many baby and toddler groups have not reopened because of the lack of volunteers. But surprisingly at Daniel's Den, we've just rec we're just recruiting new volunteers. And that slide there shows um, an induction session we had about three weeks ago with bringing volunteers. And again, because people have been reassessing what they're doing, they're really interested in volunteering and giving something back. And, you know, people from all different walks of life being able to volunteer is such a good thing. Another challenge that we face is large numbers. When we reopened our in-person sessions last September, we have been absolutely flooded with families wanting to come. And we've seen a dramatic increase in our numbers, which is wonderful, but it does provide a challenge. And we've had to introduce a booking system for one of our sessions, which again can discriminate against families who are experiencing digital poverty. And we're also having to double our sessions in other venues. The knock-on effect of this large numbers, it is a challenge for us. Funding. Wow, if I'm, well, well, we're all facing out with, but the voluntary sector funding is a massive issue. And we have put a question on this slide because we think it's really key. Why can't we receive funding for something that works? Daniel's Den does not receive one penny of government funding or local authority. We have to do all our fundraising ourselves, whether it's through donations or through grants. It's time consuming. And you know, often grant funders will want to fund new things, new ideas, but something like a baby and a toddler group with a fantastic track record, where can that funding come from for us to continue what we're doing and also reach out to more families? And I would love anybody to not ask a question, but tell us how we could get some more funding. And yeah, that is always a contentious issue. And it'd be remiss of me if, did, if I did not say, look out for Daniel Sten's fundraising month in June. And the final challenge, I am almost there. I have two more slides before I open up for questions. But this last bullet point is one that I tweet about all the time. And anybody who follows Daniel's Den on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram know that this is something that I go on about all the time. The lack of understanding and inconsistency in acknowledging the value of toddler groups by statutory bodies and others. I could talk about this at great length. I know of some groups where they have an amazing um, relationship with the local health visitors telling people about um, the, the value of the baby and the toddler groups. And but I think there's a real lack of understanding the real value that we bring. And when there are research done or reports done, you'll always say, well, we've consulted with the Children's Centre or the Family Learning Hub. But they very rarely consult with the baby and the toddler groups. And there are thousands of groups like Daniels and around the country. Why is it that they are often the hidden treasure of the nation? One of our parents came to Daniels Den and they said to me, they said, it's criminal 
that we don't know about Daniel's den. And I find that really, really sad and um, that sometimes information is withheld. I'm not going to get on a, on, a, on a political bandwagon here, but I would really ask that anybody who's watching, who's part of the statutory sector, please come and find out about what we do, the value that we bring. Yes, we have our safeguarding in place. Yes, health and safety. Yes, to all that, and I was a teacher by profession. It's such quality, this, but please come and see what we do. And I really hope that this um, webinar is giving you more of an insight into the work of a parent and toddler group and baby group. We, but we do have some fantastic, at Daniel's Den, we partner with lots of groups. I'm just about to finish, Keith, and then we can have some questions. But here are some partnerships that we do have with public services. We are constantly having visitors into our toddler groups from Diabetes UK, the local Children and Family Information Service from our local authority, local libraries. We did some online work. There's an online thing there with Funny Bunny and I chatting to someone that was about oral health promotion. Again, getting the message out there. Health Watch Brent came in to find out what's been happening with you parents during lockdown. What can we take back to the GPs and the NHS? I can't go without talking about the fantastic relationship we have with Homestart. And just that whole connected approach is so important. And the Little Village Baby Bank. Um, Little Village is a, bit, is a baby bank that's specialised in London, but there are lots of baby basics and other groups around the country. But being able, the things that people give us to be able to give to others, that we can be a conduit. And I think that's where we all need to see the way we have in being a conduit for support. And again, the Church of England, they've done amazing things to promote the work of toddler groups. And this is my final slide together everyone achieves more. That is our motto and we truly believe it and there's not a lot, we are more than just a toddler group. They often say oh it's just a toddler group that meets on a Wednesday morning and makes a mess on the carpet. We are so much more than that, signposting and connecting people. Um, this hidden treasure of the nation, thank you 1001 Days Parent Infant Foundation for giving us the opportunity to perhaps lift the lid on the work that we do. Imagine if there was a group like Daniel's Den within walking distance of every family in this nation. What a revolution that would be in society. And I'll just leave it there. That's my contact. Um, details if you want to know more. I don't know whether there are any questions, Keith. I did challenge you to think of a question, um, but I'm, I'm open to questions. Shall I stop sharing? Or Yeah, that would be great, Joe. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I've been smiling all the way through. Oh, good. Really enlightening, really moving. Your photos, just wonderful, amazing resource. Don't take my word for it, though. There are lots of people that have stayed throughout the whole of this. So oh, we've all been inspired. And there are some questions to you as well, if that's all right, Jo. But just well, to remind- I've got my assist, I've got my assistant. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Just to remind everyone, there's a Q&A function. So keep putting your questions in there, if that's okay. There is one in the chat. Um, so have your attendance numbers are they really are they really good again after lockdown I, I think you sort of implied something uh during your presentation but what, what's the difference pre pre-lockdown post-lockdown what and what happened in lockdown too well i think i i think our numbers are back up to what they were pre-lockdown i think the biggest thing that happened to us during lockdown was going digital so and i think we're still trying to get to, to get to grips with that we've got a whole new database and getting people to register online rather than a piece of paper. And that's been a real challenge for us is sort of getting that, getting that online transition going and getting people to find out about us. That, that, I think that's my biggest thing from this is that 
we get so sad about people who don't know that we exist. And 20 years ago, my health visitor was my greatest evangelist in telling family, she told everybody. That changed, that changed with Shore Start, I have to say, I know that's not the same throughout the nation, but I, I cannot say, and, I, and that really saddens me because I just think everybody should have a right to know about groups. But yeah, our numbers have really gone through the roof, really. We had to turn 17 families away from one session. Oh, gosh, gosh. Thank you for that. And that also brings us nicely onto another question that's been sent in. So how do you, what, what do you do for advertising and PR and basically getting your name out to the parents in the locality? Well, word of mouth is the biggest um, way that we get people out there. At least 45% of people who come to us is from, they've heard from somebody else. But we have a fantastic website. Again, we've got a new website in lockdown. We've got funding from Reaching Communities, which has been great. And I'll do a big, big up for them that has enabled us to employ staff so that we can do this and we can keep our presence on social media. But nothing beats a poster outside your venue the number of people that walk by and because we live in such a multicultural community so many people have no idea there's something like a toddler group or they think it's just for a certain type of person and I think this myth that you have to be in desperate need to go to a group like this and I think that's where the destigmatizing role of a baby and toddler group is so good that if it's seen as part of the fabric of the community then people will come along and they'll recommend other people. So, and do you know what we've also got, which I haven't got with me, but we've got these little postcards that have just got our details. And so parents take them, they have them in the bags. So if they're at the bus stop or in the school playground or they're in the supermarket, they give them out. And the number of people that come because they've been given one in the supermarket, it's just fantastic. So I think it's, don't assume, I think some people say we don't need to advertise. And I always think about it's fantastic for those people who are in the group, but I'm also mindful of those who are too frightened to come out of their door or because of postnatal depression or what have you, or they've had a bad experience somewhere else. So publicity, I think, find as many different ways you can to advertise. Great. Great, thank you for that. And how long do your sessions last? Do you follow a stru structure for them all or is it just free to play? Yeah, so our, our sessions last an hour and a half. They originally used to last two hours, but we do an hour and a half. And there is a very simple structure. A lot of people think that a toddler group is a case of throwing some toys on the table, putting something on the mat and say, get on with it. At Daniel's Den, it's not like that at all. We're, we're currently putting a video together to show what happens, but shall I just share, share what happens in a session? By all means. So the, so the first 45 minutes, we have the room set out very attractively with a baby area. There's always Play-Doh. There's always a themed craft. We prepare all the crafts for all our sessions at the start of the term, but there's... Um, find more to play with blocks building, there's creative play, there's wheels. So it's like that for the first 45 minutes. We have a hot spot where parents can make themselves a hot drink or someone will make it. And then we tidy up and then we serve fruit and water to all the children. And then we have a big toy time depending on our storage. So there might be slides and ride-ons or there may be balls and tunnels, whatever it is. But imagine if you're that family that's living in that one room with seven other households to have a big space to run around and to climb is wonderful. And then we always end with 10 to 15 minutes of singing and story time. And for many people, that's their favorite part. Brilliant, brilliant. And slight, slight tangent, in terms of your online offer, yeah. how, how do you recreate, recreate any of that online? Or do you do something entirely different? That's a really good question. Of course, what we create online will never be the same as an in-person session. It will never be. And we don't try for it to be that. But the sessions that we run, and we are, yeah, so the sessions that we run online, we call it Global Zoom. It's for half an hour. And we will do the singing we do book sharing through PowerPoint, like I just done before. 
and it's very interactive. And I remember we had a family from Manchester who'd moved from India, didn't know anybody in the community, the lockdown. They knew somebody in Wembley who told them about Daniel's Den. In lockdown, this child screamed his head off for half an hour in the first session of um, Global Zoom and hid behind his mum. But by the end of it, he was bringing things, we'd play games. His language was absolutely fantastic and his parent, and what a joy it was when the lockdown lifted that we were able to direct him to a toddler group in Manchester. And I think the thing is that this is the power of networking. And I know that the Duchess of Cambridge is really into this, that this connected approach, you can, we cannot do it, there's not one size fits all. And that's why to ignore the voluntary sector and the baby and toddler groups is such a short-sighted thing because these, these groups are just fantastic. They are the hidden treasure. And it was wonderful for that family that we've done this relationship building with online for them to actually find a group in the local Salvation Army in Manchester. Brilliant. Brilliant. And talking about co connections, how do you how do you make sure everyone that comes along feels involved, feels part of it, especially those where, for whatever reason, communicating might be difficult or might be very isolated? Well, I think, as I allude to at the very end, our motto, Team Together, together Everyone She's Not, we talk about it all the time. We model it. In our volunteers, we have a training programme for our volunteers, so they're trained about how to start conversations, how to observe a group, and particularly our leaders and our assistants, you're always looking out for the person sitting on their own. And again, sometimes they don't want to be bombarded with questions, but actually creating a structure enables a parent that as um, one of my parents said, she goes, you know what, Joe, it's so busy, but yet there's time for a private moment with my child. And she really enjoyed the day that her child went through a tunnel for the first time. And I think it's, we, we won't get it right all the time, Keith, but it's in our sort of ethos that everybody matters, that everybody who comes through the door has something to give and something to receive. And, and do you have access to translators if required or peers from different communities? We do, we do. So again, it's often with our parents. Like, as I said, Google, we once had a grandmother from Bulgaria and we didn't have many people who spoke Bulgarian, but Google Translate was fantastic. But you'll often find someone and, who can communicate and I think, I think one time I had a challenge with a mum who I thought it was a language difficulty, but she was actually profoundly deaf. So she was from a Tamil speaking background, but also profoundly deaf. But sometimes they will ring the husband or the mother-in-law and that's, that's how we'll often have a conversation. Um, but a smile speaks a thousand words and people feel, they can feel the welcome. Sometimes language, it's not just about the words that are spoken, it's about the way in which you run a session. Okay, that's really helpful. And then we got a couple of questions around engaging, recruiting and training volunteers. Um, mm -hmm. it, could you give us a summary of how you do it? Please? Well, word of mouth again is a thing. At the moment, we're actually on a roll with recruiting volunteers and we're finding that Again, it's getting the words out there, what you're doing and the value that you bring. So, and so on our publicity on social media, we're saying we're recruiting volunteers. We'll also announce it in our groups. Do you know somebody who would like to volunteer? And it's also breaking it down into bite-sized pieces. And I often say, which always makes people laugh, you don't actually have to like children to volunteer at a parent and toddler group, that you can make the teas or you can come early and set up or are snipping the crafts. We have a day completely away where people cook crafts. Um, but, but we value our volunteers so much. And again, we got some grant funding for a vital volunteers project where we, we have a volunteers handbook and we also have a training manual and we think that's a really important part. And I, I could do another hour on the impact that we've had on volunteers' lives. And your training's undertaken in-house, is it? Is it modelled yeah. on something off the shelf or is it all bespoke uh, no. for yourself? So 
we provide it in-house. There are other, so Care for the Family, they're a charity, they provide a, a one-day training. I've been involved in producing some resources with them. But we have found, um, oh, is it the Early Learning Alliance with their Educare offer? That's fantastic training on safeguarding. So that's something that we've just discovered and that's brilliant for your membership that you can get access to a lot of really good training online for your volunteers for quite a small membership cost. Brilliant. And we've just got one more question. Um, in terms of your funders, you don't have commissioners, but you do have grant funders. Yeah. How do you have to report back on the impact of the groups? Well, that's a really good question. As I alluded to, funding is probably one of our greatest challenges. And thanks to the Reaching Communities funding, we've been able to employ staff that's helping us gather the, the case studies and the data that then we can report back. It's sometimes really hard to quantify what impact your group has as we say it's an hour and a half but the ripples that go out are huge so we use case studies we've got data of who attends we can show where they've attended from and um, we're always looking looking for ways in which we can report back but I think that slide when I said about why is it we can't be funded to keep doing what we're doing that we have this thing so we're celebrating our silver jubilee and as we said, um, Daniel's Den is 25, help us thrive and stay alive. That actually it's through the power of volunteering that we've stayed alive for 25 years, but we want to make the next 25 years sustainable. And um, how we've done so much with so little for so long. Imagine what we could do with a little bit more. Uh, that sounds like a fantastic place to finish. There aren't any more questions, but Joe. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your expertise and knowledge. And I think your aspiration to have something just like uh, Daniel's Den within walking distance of every family would be a, a dream I know lots of us would sign up to. So thank you for everyone participating today as well for your questions and look forward to many of you joining us again next month. So thanks again, Joe, and thank you everyone. Bye-bye. That's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much.